Assalamu alaikum friends welcome to day 6 of AFM revision crash course today we are going to cover the WAC so let's see what we are going to cover today we are going to cover the past exam history introduction to the WAC cost of equity how do we calculate cost of equity more details on capital asset pricing model which beta factor should be used that means which equity beta should be used in a capital asset pricing model to get the cost of equity then we are going to calculate cost of debt and use of VAC as a discount rate. So let's go to the past exam history. Very important. This topic is very important. If you see that multiple times all these questions came as question number one as a 50 marks question. If you see VAC, three times it came as a question number one. Cost of equity also came. Cost of debt. De-gearing and re-gearing beta factors because we have to re-gear and all these are linked to each other. They are not isolated. They are not separate. For example, if you have to calculate VAC, you have to calculate cost of equity. You have to calculate cost of debt. And to calculate cost of equity, you have to de-gear and re-gear BD factors. And then we have bond valuation and credit ratings because bond is relating to a debt. It's a type of debt. Okay, so we have to use our understanding of cost of debt to find the bond valuation and also credit ratings and bond duration. If you see, all these questions came as question number one. In fact, if you see March 2019, by cost of equity, cost of debt, re-gearing, de-gearing, beta factors, and bond valuation and credit ratings all came as question number one. In the same question, all of them came together. So this shows you the importance of learning cost of capital. Okay. Question one is for 50 marks. VAC is usually asked in question number one because VAC can be asked in many uh, questions it can be linked with your acquisition and merger when you have to calculate the value of a company it could be asked as a reconstruction or reorganization to know what are the changes in the back after re uh, reorganization it could be asked as an investment appraisal question to calculate uh, net present value the only area where VAC is not asked is your risk management that is separate but other than this VAC is asked in all the other three or four uh, areas of your syllabus VAC is asked even it can be asked as a theory question. Okay. So let's go to the introduction of VAC. What is VAC? VAC is simply the addition of cost of equity plus cost of debt. Uh, debt. Okay. You weight them according to what? According to, according to their market value of the each sources of finance. Market value of each sources of finance means you have to find the market value of the debt. You have to find the market value of the equity. Okay. So you multiply that. The cost of equity by the market value of equity plus cost of debt into the market value of debt into one minus tax because cost of debt will be taking after tax okay so we have to take one minus tax that will give you and this formula is there in your formula sheet this is the formula so when you are taking the proportion of the market value that ve is the market value of equity and that ved is the market value of debt value of debt okay so value of equity over value of equity plus value of debt into KE. KE is the cost of equity plus VD over VE plus VD. Okay. You take the uh, proportion of equity over the total equity plus debt and you take the proportion of the debt market value of debt over the uh, total equity plus debt into KD 1 minus T. KD is the cost of debt and whenever you are taking KD, don't forget to take it after tax. You are always given the KD before tax pre-tax okay you have to find it after tax one minus tax and hence your VAC the reason why you have to find VAC because this fact you will be using as a discount factor to discount your cash flows right next cost of equity how do you calculate cost of equity there are three methods to calculate cost of equity they are known as the first method capital asset pricing model where you just need the equity beta and rest all is given to you risk free rate is given market risk premium is given to you right so this is the formula risk free plus beta into um, uh, market risk minus the risk free rate and where rm minus rf is known as equity risk premium sometimes if they give you the risk premium is five percent and the risk free rate is three percent don't minus five minus three no it is five percent is after deducting it from the uh, that risk free rate has been deducted from RM then only they got the risk premium as 5% so you can take as it is 5% and multiply it by the equity beta so you have to see the word is it market return 
or is it a risk free uh, sorry is it a risk premium if it's a risk premium no need to deduct if it's market return then market return minus risk free into the beta okay so that beta only we have to find in the cost of equity capital asset pricing model everything will be given to you second method is dividend valuation model dvm and how do you know which method should i use to find cost of equity in the question you have to see okay but information is given for what so dividend valuation model this is also given all those formulas are there in your formula sheet d0 that is the current dividend into 1 plus d the growth rate the growth rate will be given to you so you multiply the growth rate by the current dividend divided by po the current share plus G growth ke always whenever you see this ke it is no it is the cost of equity only and the third method is modi gelani and the miller's proposition to that means with tax this is the method kei kei means is ungeared plus 1 minus tax into this ungeared cost of equity minus sorry it is geared it is geared kei is the gear that means debt is taken into that okay k geared plus 1 minus tax into the geared cost of equity minus cost of debt into value of debt over value of equity that will give you ke just ke is there that means it is ungeared only the cost of equity if kei that means it is a geared cost of equity okay and this the third formula which is given here this is mostly used in your adjusted present value that will be the next topic that we are going to cover tomorrow in day Seven. The third one is mostly used in the adjusted present value because where, there you have to find the ungeared cost of equity. Why? Because when we are discussing it, I'm I I will be discussing adjusted present value tomorrow in detail, but in the next video. But here, let me give you briefly why. Because adjusted present value, when you calculate the net present value, you definitely have to calculate the net present value before you reach the adjusted present value. That is known as base case net present value. that means we are assuming that it is totally equity finance to total equity finance means there is no debt we have to use the cost of equity which is ungeared there is no debt into that that's why we need the third method to find adjusted present value to find the cost of equity for the base case net present value come to the exam focus all the formulas all the three formulas here is given in your formula sheet okay remember guys examiner will never tell you which method to use to find the cost of equity that's it's up to you how do you know it simply based on the information that is given to you you have to pick the correct formula you have to be wise enough to pick the correct formula sometimes you might use the wrong formula okay for example if the question gives information like risk free rate beta is given market return is given then which method you should use capital asset pricing model okay it does not refer to dividend or gearing nothing to uh, refer to dividend or gearing so if it's not referring to dividend you cannot use dividend valuation model if gearing is not there you cannot use the this third method mm proposition 2 you cannot use if gearing is not mentioned if dividend is not mentioned then it's the capital asset pricing model more details on capital asset pricing model which beta factor should we use in that capital asset pricing model that also you have to get it right because otherwise your cost of equity will change okay to calculate the current cost of equity use the current beta factor that is used but guys this is afm it, if it was in financial management okay scenarios are very easy but it's not here in afm things are never easy they will not give you directly like this that this is the beta factor put it and find the cost of equity no 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 you have to find you have to find that beta factor to find that beta factor so many workings are there you have to de gear and then you have to re gear okay you have to use a equity beta that a proxy beta it is known as a proxy beta proxy beta means a beta that is given for a similar quoted company so if your company is unquoted and you are using a proxy beta from a similar quoted company don't forget that you have to adjust your beta because you are an unquoted company definitely your risk will be higher okay but and usually they will give you the proxy beta is given to you you don't have to worry about it it's given to you you just have to adjust it okay this is if the current beta factor they don't give you the equity beta directly like this then you have to find out 
through the similar company's proxy beta. And what does it include? What does it reflect? It reflects two things, that beta value. One is business risk, one is financial risk. If you see in your exam, most of the time you have to talk about these two things. In their, in their descriptive answers, you have to write about it after calculating it. So be ready for calculation. When your beta is higher, it means there's two things. One is business risk, one is financial risk. Business risk means it is resulting from the operations. And for business risk, they will give you more information in the scenario also. That this business is risky, this business, the sales are declining, the profits are not good enough, uh, the industry is not stable, something like that they will give you about the business. And when it comes to finance risk, finance risk is more like your capital structure, debt versus equity. It is resulting from the level of your gearing, how much debt you are using in the capital structure. Okay. So based on that beta value. Next. There are therefore there are two types of beta. Why? Because there are two types of risk. So the, you know that beta is the measure of risk. Okay. Higher the beta, higher your risk. But there are two types of risk. That uh, when you value your company, that it includes two types of risk. The beta value. That's why even the betas are also two types. One is known as asset beta. The other one is known as equity beta. Asset beta is also known as ungeared beta. There is no debt here. Okay, so asset beta is linked to the business risk. Okay, it will reflect your business risk. When you see the asset beta, if you see your asset beta is increasing, that means your business risk increased. This is how you interpret. Okay, it will be given as BA. You have to make sure that you understand this link. Asset beta with the business risk. Second type of beta is equity or geared beta. Okay, the same. Geared beta is equity beta, asset beta is ungeared beta. You have to know the words interchangeably. So equity beta reflects financial risk. That means proportion of your debt in the uh, capital structure. It, it includes both. That equity beta includes both the type of risk. Business risk as well as finance risk. Okay, but since we, have, we are talking about the business risk in the asset beta, when we are talking about equity beta, talk about financial risk. For example, you can talk that if you, you have taken more debt here, capital structure change, that's why more risk, that's why equity beta is higher. Like this, you can reflect. Okay. But remember, in your capital asset pricing model, which beta are you putting? Equity beta, the second beta. Equity beta you are putting, the geared beta. Not the asset beta. Asset beta you need to find the equity beta. You re-gear the asset beta because it's ungeared then find the equity beta and put that in the capital asset pricing model and find the cost of equity. And that cost of equity you are going to put in the VAC also when you're calculating. It's a long procedure, but it is something that you can score the maximum marks in this section. I bet you on this. So learn this area very well. You cannot skip this area no matter what. If not in question one, at least in question two, at least in question three, some area you will be getting. We definitely know that we'll be getting three questions and out of three questions, one is investment and appraisal, one is risk management, one could be reconstruction or accusation or merger. But whatever it is, at least in one of it, you will get this calculation of VAC. So in the calculation of VAC, equity also comes. So in the equity, this also comes, re-gearing, ungearing. Now exam focus, okay? In the exam, you will have to de-gear the proxy equity beta that is given to you. That means uh, the equity beta of the similar company you have to de-gear it. You just cannot take it as it is and put it in your VAC calculation. No, you have to de-gear it. Because remember, the equity beta that is given to you includes their capital structure, that company's capital structure. You have to take it out, take the effect of it and put your capital structure in that equity beta and use it in your capital asset pricing model. You understand it? Because that, is, that equity beta is used using the gearing of that quoted company, not your company. And then you have to reflect the gearing position of the company in the question. That means your question, the company that is you have uh, you have been given in the question. Okay. Whenever you are answering a question, always uh, think that this is your company. You are finding. Okay. You have to re-gear then, ungear and re-gear. So this is the formula to find the what to re uh, de-gear. 
you are removing the effect of the capital structure of that company first before you regear you have to degear okay so the formula is ve that is market value of equity divided by market value of equity plus market value of debt into 1 minus tax into equity beta you will find the asset beta first you find the asset beta this equity beta that is given that be that is there the proxy company's equity beta then you have to find the asset beta once you find the asset beta now use your capital structure and then find again equity beta now the equity beta that you will find using this asset beta will be your equity beta okay then you can use it to use it to find cost of equity and definitely i have made a whole new, uh, video on this uh, previously you can check on my playlist uh, in the investment appraisal lecture regear and uh, ungear equity beta something like that the name of the video was like that there you can find this out the calculation is there because the, this videos are revision crash course right i am not going to do calculations on all cost of debt how are you going to find cost of debt examiner always gives you cost of debt pre tax before tax okay unless the examiner says that it is post tax or after tax you have always have to assume that it is before tax that's why you always have to multiply it by 1 minus tax that means you have to take after tax okay for the cost of debt next two main methods of calculating cost of debt first one is we are using the dividend valuation model dvm okay one is for irredeemable debt the other one is for redeemable debt so for irredeemable debt the formula is given as i into 1 minus tax divided by market value that i is what that i is the interest okay interest into 1 minus tax divided by market value market value of that debt if it's irredeemable this is the formula if it's a redeemable okay then you have to find the irr of the market value okay post tax there's a long that table is there that you have to do this also i have made a video on this to find the cost of debt and all post tax interest and redemption amount all those things you need for redeemable debt okay then we have second method that is known as use of credit spread they will give you that table and they will tell you that this is this class this bond is this class a class double a class and for four years five years so based on that you have to find the credit spread risk free rate is also given to you so risk free rate plus the credit spread into 1 minus tax always because cost of debt is always into 1 minus tax you have to do okay that credit spread is given to you so you don't have to worry about it but it depends what what you are given if you are given the credit spread you have to make use of the credit spread if you are not given the credit spread it is the first method that you have to use but in the first method also you have to see whether the debt is redeemable or irredeemable because the method is different then right and mostly from my experience examiner always gives you redeemable debt right irredeemable also they can give you they can give you both in one question but mostly it is a redeemable debt which is given hence the bond valuation and all you have to see the bond valuation and all next use of vac as a discount rate we know that we are using the vac as a discount rate that's why it's important when you are taking the vac as a discount rate that it reflects the risk of that new project okay so you can use the existing vac as a discount rate if it satisfy two conditions number 1 the new project that you are investing has the same level of risk business risk as the existing operations how will you know this see the examiner will, uh, in the new scenario they will tell you okay in the case study they will give you whether they have the same level of business risk or not if it changes then you cannot use the same back second financial risk is same capital structure is same it will not change but very rarely th this is the situation okay in your exam most of the time both are changed or either one is uh, same the other one changes but it will change okay this is through my experience i'm telling you because really they will not keep it this simple that you can use the existing back for the new project that's the reason why we have to do the regear and degear and all those things to the beta because business risk changes financial risk changes okay so that's it so tomorrow we'll be coming up with adjusted present value risk adjusted back and adjusted present value because adjusted present value is also a question that you can be asked 
with the net present value okay sometimes they just give you net present value sometimes they give you adjusted present value also usually it comes as a 50 marks question but it can come as a 25 marks question also okay and since this is a new area in the uh, afm students struggle a lot in adjusted present value so make sure that you go through adjusted present value and revise everything before you come from tomorrow's session so thank you and take care